What are the recent developments on mammalian allergens such as cat? It, the situation with cat has really developed in the last few years because we, we knew about FELD1 for a long time. That is the major allergen associated with inhalant allergy and particularly with asthma. But we didn't know about the other allergens is, that are part of cat extract and in fact often people talked about cat as if FELD1 was the only important allergen. It's now become clear that there are several other allergens in a cat extract which not only can you measure separately but have really different significance. And the two that I want to talk about are um, FELD2, which is associated with, is an albumin which cross-reacts with pork albumin, and alpha-gal, which is the glycosylation on mammalian proteins, on many mammalian proteins, including CAT IgA. So that, let's talk about the CAT IgA first, because that, that actually was described before we knew about alpha-gal, that there was a carbohydrate antigen on CAT IgA, which could be the target of IgE antibodies, but it was not known which sugar it was. Then we worked out the glycosylation on cetuximab and realized that it wasn't unusual for people to have in the south to have IgEs to alpha-gal, and alpha-gal is the oligosaccharide on CAT IgA. It is a common blood group substance of the non-primate mammals. But if you skin test with CAT, you can get a positive response with alpha-gal. If you do a blood test for CAT, you can get a positive result with alpha-gal. So that getting a positive skin test or a positive blood test doesn't tell you which antigen is responsible. And the third one that came up is that we were testing many patients for alpha-gal because they had had late onset of delayed reactions to red meat, and then we found some negatives. Some of the negatives who had convincing stories and positive assays to pork or beef, but were negative for alpha-gal. And then we realized that these patients had IgE to, the, to albumin, pork albumin, which was because of a cross-reactivity with cat albumin. And at the moment, we think that the pork cat syndrome starts with sensitization to cat, and that cross-reacts with pork. They don't sensitize to pork in the first place. They sensitize to cat, and that cross-reacts with pork. Obviously, it's possible it could occur the other way, but we don't think that's common. So now you've got three different syndromes which could present with a positive skin test to cat. How will this affect patients in the future? It, it's. It's difficult to know how much this can become part of normal practice. The alpha-gal assay is widely used um, and is available, and thousands of people have been tested, and we are well aware that there are thousands of cases that have been identified now, right? pretty common in the South. So that I think that, that many doctors now, faced with a confusing case of adult-onset food allergy, are doing tests which can actually confirm it. And in terms of the patients, it's very reassuring to them that they're not crazy. I mean, because previously they'd been told they were crazy or this was nothing to do with allergy. And if you can tell them that this is the correct answer and they need to avoid red meat, um, for most of the patients, that's not a big problem. You have some patients who are really demanding why can't you desensitize me? Why can't you treat me? And we've got several patients we might consider giving Zolaire to or omalizumab. Um, but that's very, I think, small print by comparison with the ability to, to educate people and say, this is what's happened to you. What is your take-home message for allergists and primary care physicians? Uh, be aware of be aware of these other syndromes, and that for primary care doctors, I think late onset um, of food, apparent food reactions, either delayed or immediate, is definitely a reason for getting help from, a, from an allergist. 
I think for the allergists, the question is, are we going to be doing IgE antibodies for specific components of cat extract? Um, we're getting used to the idea of measuring IgE to components of peanut because, because of the difference between Rh2 and Rh8, which I think most people are now used to. And if you've got a confusing case of peanut, you do that. I think if you have a confusing case of someone who's sensitized to cat and, and it isn't making sense, then I think the blood tests are a really good idea. And I think having those available will make, make our lives easier. Um, clearly, all tests cost money, but I think that getting patients, many patients really want to know what's happening. And I think that our having a better, better ways of doing it is just obviously an advantage. Where is this type of research heading in the future? We, we had great discussions at the meeting about how far you can go with component analysis. Component being, if you have someone who's positive to an allergen, do you need to know which protein in that allergen is relevant? So for dust bite, there are now 32 different allergens available, and clearly we're not, we're not going to do 32 different tests to identify them. And there may only be two or three major issues with these allergens, where so that you could have a test for different groups of components within um, an allergen. So with dust mite, it might be a real advantage to know that this is not derp 10 which is the tropomyosin. Um, and so that how far this will go to the other allergens, I don't know. I think it may spread. I'm sure it will increase. But I can't believe that we'll really be doing component analysis for a wide range of allergens. But in some places, there are only four or five allergens which dominate practice. And you might really want to be able to do component analysis of those four.